Hey guys, KJ here. In this video, I'm going to be going over armor sets, perks and mods available from destination and activities. I'll be breaking down on how to make the most of your gear for preparation for armor 2.0 overhaul, which is coming within Shadowkeep this September. I want to show you the best gear available for preferred activities and round up with the best all round setups for both daily and end game content. So I hope to give you guys some ideas and tips of how to quickly get your hands on gear that will help you in whatever activities you decide to do. So let's get into it. So the evolution of armor through D2 was quite rocky. From year one, the armor was in a way unrewarding with fixed roles and once you obtain that armor set you've got it to which then stopped the grinding to a halt for most players as there wasn't anything else to collect after you've got everything in year two we saw the return of random roles on armor and the introduction of mods which players started coming back to the game as there was something new and something to grind for to get your god role set up you're looking for and it also brought us two new locations and a PvE VP activity, which coming with a destination, gear and weapons. With armor, there are three stats that matter, mobility, resilience and recovery. You'll be able to control these stats depending on what type of armor the specific set is. So for example, the survivalist hunter armor. Um, it will have more recovery than mobility or resilience, but it will share the other traits. Now let's take a look at the other different types of armor there are. So there's a mobile, survivalist and heavy. Each piece of armor has a mod socket. Mods are available from the gunsmith vendor Banshee and from random engrams and you can be slotted to boost stats. So if we were to look at a survivalist setup, up to five mods can be added to boost either mobility or resilience. It makes sense to use these available slots if you haven't got anything slotted. So think about putting something in as you're definitely missing out. As well as an additional mobility, resilience and recovery, you can boost cooldown times of your abilities. So here's an example of a baseline cooldown time with a stack of 5 mods based on a class ability of a hunter. So without mods it was 25 seconds. With all 5 Paragon mods reduce the cooldown to 10 seconds. It is important to consider keeping your mods consistent with each set as the benefits from stacking mods far outweighs the individual effects. Here's an example of different armor sets with mods dedicated to the same cooldown. So with this lovely titan with newly equipped opulence gear it has the mobility of 2, 10 resilience and 2 recovery. So adding 5 recovery mods will get you a 2, 10, 7 stat. In addition to these mods, there are activity and location based buffs available to collect. These are Riven's Curse and Transcendent Blessings, which you can get from the Dreaming City, Fallen mods from Scourge of the Past Raid from Season of the Forge, and The Reckoning has brought us the Resist mods. The Menagerie and Crown of Sorrows also have brought us unique mods and also a close look on what armor 2.0 will look like. We have collected one of these mods already from the raid which states that that type of mod cannot be stacked so I am intrigued what other mods will be. In Bungie's Twitch stream they had this to say about the armor moving forward in Shadowkeep. More character customizations, deeper pursuits due to the fact that current players choose the way of specific armor plays, e.g. the sats and rolls, over the look of the armor. So this will make wearing a full set of collectible armor more rewarding. This also seems to be augmented with modifiers for activities such as five of swords. So let's go over many ways you can get these armor sets or loot loops that they are available. So probably and firstly the most accessible for new players are the factions, namely the Vanguard via Zavala and Crucible via Shax. To rank up and earn rewards from these loot pools, all you have to do is complete playlist strikes and crucible matches, hand in tokens that you get and claim your reward. The loot pool contains armor and weapons unique to that faction, but as well 
well as these rewards, you can also trade in materials gained from dismantling items that are mainly used for the infusion with Banji. He rewards some random roll year one weapons, no armor those, just weapons so I won't go over on these here. So as well as tower factions, each destination also have a vendor, however these rewards only cover year one items. To trade with these guys, you need to rank up with the materials unique to their destination, materials which are then also used for the infusion, and you start seeing a pattern here. With the exception of Spider in the Tangled Shore and Petra in the Dreaming City, destination rewards will not roll with random perks, but they will decrypt as usual legendary power level, not just powerful. Spider and Petra trade with us in a different way. These guys offer us bounties, then require us to hunt down enemies or allow access to activities for exchange of currency. I will also be explaining this in new light guides, so make sure you watch out for those. The best year 2 armor can be found by doing seasonal activities. Season of the Outlaw saw us track down the killers of our best buddy and hunter vanguard Cade 6. Our hunt had us team up with Petrofange and the spider and had us running around the tangled shores taking out scorn bands until we finally faced Prince Aldrin and take our revenge. These were unique rewards on offer for doing this, an armor set called Spoils of the Shore and the Lord of Wolves exotic shotgun which you'll know all about if you played Iron Banana during Season of the Opulence, especially on PC. One nice touch by Bungie, though, is to include a Memory of Cade class item, with Heavy Ammo Finder being a fixed perk. This is a great way to bring in new random roll systems, which started with Season of the Outlaw. You can also collect a full set of Baron themed armour by chasing down Cade's killers, however you'll need to repeat these activities as they are not guaranteed drops. The Dreaming City brought us a 3 week cycle, and for more details on this and secrets it holds, check out my playlist I will add in the link in the description below. The Loot Loop is engaged each week with powerful drops available, and of course items collect from the loot pool. The unique thing about this loop is for the first time enhanced perks were available on armour rolls. These rolls are then usually found on exotic armour, which means that you'll be restricted to one item, but now, if you're lucky enough, you can equip as many as you have available. Reverie Dawn armour also comes with a buff already slotted, Riven's Curse, which buffs damage for both us and the enemy while in the Dreaming City, and it also has a nice taken effect while Ascendant buff is active. So now get the enhanced version of the Riven's Curse, you need Transcendent Blessing, which gives you 5% damage buff per mod. So you have to complete special bounties gained by doing normal powerful bounties from Petra, and a good guide on how to get these, check out my playlist. After Season of the Outlaw came, in my opinion at least, one of the best targeted loop loops available in Destiny, we were introduced to the Black Armoury and its wares through Ada 1. You can find Ada in the tower and she acts quite similar to the other vendors. She sells bounties and from these you gain rewards by participating in forge ignitions on Earth and on Nessus. The biggest draw to Ada and her lost forges are the weapons. However, with each weapon forged, you can also forge a black armoury piece of armour, making this a really great way to loot quickly. To see how to unlock all forges and frames quickly, check out my black armoury guide in the playlist. What you'll need to forge a piece of armour is a weapon frame ready to be forged and an item Ada sells called a forge polymer. You can only buy one from her at a time, so don't forget when you pick up a frame that's ready to go and be forged, collect and use the polymer too. The armour set does look pretty cool, so yes, just get farming. 
Now let's look at the reckoning activity which Season of the Drifter gave us. Caesar's invited aboard the derelict. Gambit Prime is an involved version of Gambit and it's heavily involved in the loop loot. So you got to collect synths through playing matches. Synths are then rewarded by playing certain roles during a Gambit Prime match such as getting kills while invading. You then upgrade a moat synthesizer, which you use to synthesize moats to deposit within the Reckoning. Once you complete a cycle of the Reckoning, you'll be rewarded with a Royal Pacific armor piece to wear during Gambit Prime. You can wear it during any activity, however, it has benefits only available in Gambit Prime attached to it, so it's kind of like an extra layer. These perks are actually really good and make Gambit Prime a far more tactical version of Gambit, the only downside being solo queuing may not be the best fun, whereas coordinating a 4 stack, each with a full benefit of Gambit Prime armour, will be the best way to get the most out of this activity. Each role in Gambit Prime has three tiers of armor and of course four roles and three classes. So if you're on the hunt for all armor sets, you better bank those moats, brother. Uh, but they do actually look pretty damn good with their auras gained from wearing a full set of tier three armor. And the perks for Gambit Prime are fun to use as well. It is certainly worth it for your collections and you also get to meet an old friend during tier three of the Reckoning. Well, on the correct week at least, as the encounters do change. If you're in a team of four, stick with them as farming the Reckoning can need as much coordination as Gambit Prime. Not to mention you can of course fail the Reckoning and you have to repeat any failed attempts after collecting back your initially deposited moat. The mods specific to the Reckoning are the Resist mods. They cannot be stacked and they come with different Resist buffs, but the most useful is being Major Resist, as you probably come across more Majors than Bosses than any given activity. Now, to the last season of Year 2, Season of Opulence is by far the most interesting because for the first time we have a 6 player match made activity and it's based on the Revivum, which is the location for the end game in Year 1. The loot loop so far has been the most rewarding, however the run back method for chest farming was always destined for a patch. So the loop starts on the barge, we are then invited to the menagerie and offered a chalice to fix. The chalice needs upgrading and we choose how we go about it, but it does take imperials to do so, which are available from triumphs and bounties. To unlock the full potential of the chalice, you will need to fully upgrade and have runes slotted in the correct combinations. There are a set of opulent armour and weapons to collect, as well as some older revived sets. The benefits from the opulent gear can give a fully master work from completing the heroic Monaganag, and specific activity mods can drop. Specific activity mods can come very handy, as Year 1 Leviathan Raiders will recall. The perks on raid gear helps with situation specific encounters during the raid. However, there was sacrifice needed to gain those advantages, e.g. loss of stats somewhere along the line, where opulent armour goes a step further and allows you layers to be applied to your stats without sacrifice. So as you can see, this mod actually reduces hive damage by 20% while taking hive damage, so it doesn't state while on the Viathan, so we can safely say this applies across all destinations. It is important to mention that when max power levels have reach, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're end game. It does mean that you're end game ready, of course. It usually matters more what weapons you use at max power, but in some cases there are additional mods or perks available. The power of a certain weapon matters less on how it's being used, and one thing that's pretty common in Destiny are damage buffs. That being said, with weapons being exchanged between characters easily, armour isn't. So, you may need to think about a broad approach to perks and mod synergy early on in new activities and specialise as you go on. 
while keeping an eye out for current meta weapons such as Swarm of the Raven and Boop Combo. I'll be covering best weapons more often, but check out my best for forges guide in the description below. So during endgame activities such as raids or heroic or harder version of missions or activities, you can use what gear you've gained and the synergy you have built to combat the highest difficulties in the game. After the fights have been won, they will be yet again more things to collect. Just remember nothing is too far out of reach that it's impossible to get as repeating activities will only make them more familiar and eventually easier to overcome. It was interesting that year one Leviathan armor perks worked during the end game of Season of the Opulence. It goes to show that if well thought out, the gear we choose can be very effective in given activities. Take the Reverie for example, during the Reverie event we were able to buff ourselves with enhanced cooldowns, most powerful being the grenade of course. With a full stack of armour and the buff active, grenades only had a 1 second cooldown and they were stupidly OP in Strikes and Nightfall and I heard that skip grenades also was causing havoc in the Crucible. And a more recent example, a class item from any Reviathan raid buffed class abilities by 20%, so Goldies and Wells just got a whole lot more powerful during the hardest content we while well, most who've tried in the first week would have been underpowered for it. So I'm excited when year 3 starts with Shadowkeep and the introduction of the artifact which Bungie said that when the last perk is active it will be close to what an exotic feels like but when we do find out what it does and how we get it it will give additional and extra layers to our mods and setup not to mention the return of the intellect strength and discipline like we had in destiny 1 but it's a great way to bring more stats into the game but I will go over that in more depth along with the changes of Armor 2.0 and how to make the most of it in another video. So make sure you turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out. Well, I hope this video has helped. If it has, then please let me know by hitting that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for further content. Anyway, that is it from me. So take care guys. Bye bye.